You're gonna need a bigger boat. Hi Last Watchers, today's watch comes courtesy of the China based Liege Watch Company. It's a freebie, but you can rest assured that won't sway my review in the slightest. This is the Feel Never FN1802, a deep sea diver with megalodon proportions that make it by far the biggest watch that I've had on the channel. It's an absolute monster that has tested the extremes of my calipers with a rather healthy diameter of 47.8 millimeters, a mammoth lug to lug of 56.1 millimeters, a tubby total thickness of 20.8 millimeters, but a fairly moderate lug width of 21.8 millimeters. It could easily have been bigger. To give a sense of scale, here it is alongside the 32 millimeter Type A11 from Presidus. Hardly a fair comparison, I hear you say. I agree. However, even my wrist-friendly Steinhardt OVM39 looks like a relative lightweight. The mid-sized 42mm Glycine Combat Sub still looks almost waif-like compared to the heavyweight. The Feel Never is a noticeably big watch, but its most striking attribute when you get it in hand is its weight. Fully laden on its fitted bracelet, the diver comes in at 277 grams. I removed four links to get a secure fit on my 7 inch wrist and this beast still hits the scales at more than 256 grams, easily 100 grams heavier than your average dive watch. All my family members that picked this watch up made the same remark, that the sheer weight of this watch will help you sink, which I guess make it ideal for saturation or deep diving. Getting back to the surface might be an issue. The case and bracelet of the FN1802 is a solid 316L stainless steel with a sandblasted satinized finish that give it a battleship grey appearance which should help to minimize the signs of wear and tear. The case is chunky with graciously turned down lugs, a must on such a big watch. There's a well guarded screw down crown at the 3 o'clock position with what I'm assuming is a matte black PVD or similar finish. As you would expect, it's a good size, easy to grip, and is engraved with a shield-like Liege logo. There's quite a long thread on the crown stem, and a noticeable wobble once it's unscrewed. At the 10 o'clock position, there's a secondary crown for the helium escape valve. It has the same satinized finish as the case, and is also adorned with a Liege logo. The escape valve has a manual rather than automatic operation. This is done by turning the crown slightly clockwise and then pulling it out to release any gases. It's spring loaded and will pull itself back into place. Just remember to lock it with an anti-clockwise turn. The all black unidirectional ceramic bezel is fairly unmissable. Yes, you heard me, ceramic bezel. Feel never have fitted their diver with an entirely ceramic timing ring I can't confirm its credentials without cracking it, but it would appear that adding a mere ceramic insert to a metal bezel just wasn't good enough for the brand, and they've gone for full hardcore ceramic. Sadly, it's been let down by hard to grasp small rounded teeth around its outer edge. The stepped base of the hour markers do a much better job, allowing for a firm hold as you rotate the unidirectional ring through its 120 anti-clockwise clicks with little to no backplay. The bezel has 20 minute indices and dot markers for the odd hours, the largest of which is at the 12 o'clock position. The race sections are home to the even Arabic hours, all of which are filled with luminous paint, which I assume to be BGW9. Feel never state that their loom is tritium, which I doubt as tritium is usually used in gas form and held captive in sealed glass tubes. I'm happy to be corrected on this. The painting of the loom is a little hit and miss, as on the whole it's reasonably well done, but there is some sloppy application on the 6 Arabic, and more noticeably on the 8. The slightly domed sapphire crystal adds a minimal amount of thickness to the watch's dimensions. Thank God. There's some visible blue refraction, which would suggest the use of an anti-reflective coating. Beneath the crystal is a clear bare metal rehort. 
a slim line chapped a ring with printed white seconds indices, with white Arabic 5 second markers, the exceptions being the 15, 30, 45 and 60 seconds Arabics that are printed red. The black textured dial has applied brushed hour markers that have no uniformity in that their brush strokes travel in different directions on almost every marker. The exception to this are the 3 and the 9 markers which have a horizontal stroke and the 6 marker alongside the NFL style Varsity 12 o'clock Arabic which have been brushed with vertical strokes. This may be accidental or deliberate as it allows each marker to catch the light differently. You can make up your own mind. The markers are all painted with the same loom as used on the bezel. There's a white printed crosshair target in the centre of the dial which has been broken to make way for a white printed feel never branding below the 12 o'clock position and some red text denoting the watch's water resistance of 50 bar or 500 metres. Yes, as mentioned, this is a deep sea diver. It comes from the feel never deep dive series, which would explain its oversized proportions and the need for the helium escape valve. Whether or not it's been tested in fathoms of dark murky waters is anyone's guess. If it had, then I think they would have done a better job with the loom. There's a loom shot on the way, but don't hold your breath. There's a comparatively minute red frame date window at the 3 o'clock with black numerals on a white background. Its removal would be no loss. Above the 6 o'clock marker is more red text confirming that this watch is an automatic. The handset of the Feel Never are fairly intricate, maybe more than they need to be, but I appreciate the effort that's gone into their design. A fence post minute and a thick arrow hour hand with matte black bases that lead to brushed metal frames filled with loom. The sweeping seconds hand is a mixed bag, a slim red arrow with tail end quills and a brushed metal paddle that could easily be confused with a syringe style tip, again filled with loom. The feel never loom has an uneven spread. It appears quite thin on the dial with the bezel and hands getting in the line share, but they are all too quick to fade. The time telling capabilities of the FN1802 come courtesy of the Miyota 8215. It's an automatic movement that winds but doesn't hack. It's a simple three hander with a date complication that has 21 joules and a beat rate of 21,600 ticks an hour or 6 ticks a second. It has a power reserve of 40 hours and a stated accuracy of between minus 20 and plus 40 seconds per day. This particular version is running at plus 13 seconds per day. Not great, but acceptable. The screwing case back of the Feel Never has a lightly embossed Mercator style globe map that primarily depicts the Americas. No doubt its target market. It has the same battleship grey finish as the rest of the case, some contrasting polishing, would have been appreciated. The text around its perimeter has the same satinized finish which make it quite hard to read. Luckily there are no surprises here as it references the stainless steel construction, automatic movement, its 1802 model number, sapphire glass and of course its 500 meter water resistance. The 3.7 millimeter thick three link bracelet has solid female end links that fit quite securely between the watch lugs. The bracelet starts at 21.8mm and tapers ever so slightly to 20.1mm where it meets the buckle. The buckle jumps back out to a width of 21.5mm. It's engraved with another liege logo, has a fold over safety catch and a double push button release that opens to reveal a fully mill deploying clasp. There are no half links on the bracelet but the buckle does benefit from three holes of micro adjustment. The bracelet links are held together with push pins. The diver did come with a push pin removal tool that broke at the first opportunity. Luckily, I have my own. Before I wrap up the review, I should mention that this is not the first watch from Liege to appear on the channel. That honour went to this, the Liege LG 1856, a two-tone Rolex Submariner homage and a pretty poor one at that. The 1856 was advertised as having an NH35 movement and sapphire glass, it had neither. If you've done any kind of shopping on AliExpress, then you'll know firsthand that many sellers have a loose translation of the English language, which is forgivable, but misrepresentation is not. 
I suggested that anyone looking to buy a Rolex homage should give leisure hard swoothe and spend their money elsewhere with the likes of Pagani Design or San Martin. In hindsight, my review should have been a bit more stern. When I realised people were still buying the 1856, I removed it from my archive. If anyone out there would like to give a home to the liege which has been sitting in a box for two years, then like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave me a message in the comments below. I'll select someone at random and give it away in my next review. In a push for 20,000 subscribers, I'll be giving away a bunch of watches before the end of 2023. Make sure you're subscribed. The LG1856 left an unwelcome stain on the character of Liege, with many reviewers chucking muck at the brand. The introduction of the Feel Never sub-brand may be a way of distancing themselves from that debacle. Now let's get back to the review. The FN1802 is a striking and solid built watch with turned down lugs and female end links that help it to conform to my 7 inch wrist, but its thickness, width and weight are quite unyielding. It's a top heavy diver that builds its own momentum if worn loose. This big boy needs to be restrained and held captive on those with larger wrists or preferably over a wetsuit where it will look very much at home. Feel never claim that the specification of their deep dive series will rival that of watches costing upwards of $2,000, which is pretty impressive as the 1802 is currently selling on AliExpress for around $184, £172 or €196. Euros. Even at that price, I would have expected a better movement with the ability to hack the seconds and longer lasting loom with a more refined application, especially on that ceramic bezel. And if I'm being really picky, I might have expected a Seiko style hard coating on that case and bracelet as I suspect the battleship grey finish may be susceptible to blemishes and the inevitable tool watch scratch. I noticed the bracelet was showing signs of wear straight out of the box. If you're a fan of the Feel Never FN1802 and decide to take the plunge, then your diver will come delivered in a Peli style mini travel case with included cleaning cloth, instruction manual, two year warranty, oh, and that push pin removal tool that you can throw in the bin. I'll add an affiliate link to the Feel Never AliExpress storefront where you can choose between this black dial version or the blue or brown variant with grey bezel. Using the link won't cost you a penny more but will earn a small commission for the channel. As a final thought, Feel Never as a brand name has me puzzled. A watch isn't just on your wrist to tell the time. It's there as a memento, to remind you of family, key events and special occasions. It should stir your emotions, fill you with excitement, put a smile on your face or bring a tear to your eye. It should make you feel something, not never. Don't forget to share your thoughts on the Feel Never FN1802 Deep Sea range in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.